So let's uh, go ahead and get started. Uh, so we're in uh, new material territory, and I, I heard uh, uh, a couple of people talking uh, before class uh, that uh, I've, I've said I've been lost in this class before, but I've never been quite this lost. Uh, so uh, that's okay. Uh, this is this is not this is not easy material, and I don't really expect you guys to understand it completely now. But that's that's kind of why we we go through. Uh, the process of uh, of uh, learning these things and uh, doing it in an incremental manner. So uh, you'll know more at the end of today than you did before, uh, and then we'll keep doing that until the test, and then hopefully you'll understand the material. Uh, so the the crux of the material that uh, was on the homework was about uh, what's called Faraday's law, and what Faraday's law says is the integral around some closed loop of e dot dl is equal to the negative partial derivative with respect to time of b dot da. Okay. So from this equation, we actually already see something that we've seen before, uh, namely the integral uh, over some closed loop of e dot dl. And it's actually not an accident, I did this on purpose when I, when I talked about circuit analysis, that we actually use this left-hand side of uh, the equation when we did the circuit analysis. We just said that this was equal to zero because there was no magnetic field. Now the new piece to all this is this uh, negative time derivative of the magnetic flux. And so again, this is new, but not quite new, because when we look at this portion of the equation, whenever we have some field dotted with some area element and then we sum over it, we say that this is a flux, right? We do the same thing with electric flux. Magnetic flux is really no different. So uh, when we talked about electric flux, what we said was the, um, the electric flux is equal to the integral of E dot dA, okay? Now we're just saying the magnetic flux is equal to the integral of B dot dA. Now, the other piece that we have here is this negative time derivative, and so Faraday's law is not so interested in what the magnetic flux is exactly, as much as it's interested in how the magnetic flux changes with respect to time. So for instance, in an experimental sense, if I have some loop of wire and I have some magnet here, this is the north end, this is the south end, and I just hold it here, nothing's going to happen, right? In order to get some current to move around this loop of wire, what I need to do is I need to change the magnetic flux. And so one way that I could do that is to move the magnet. Right? If I move the magnet, then uh, the magnetic field lines that are coming off of this magnet are going to be uh, larger going through the loop if I push it this way. Uh, another way that I could, I could change what the magnetic flux is is to not move the magnet and make the loop bigger, right? So if I stretch this loop, there would be more of these, uh, these magnetic field lines that could make it through the loop, or if I contract the loop. Um, so that's, that's another way. Another way that we could change the magnetic flux, um, and really what, what this comes down to is if, if we look at uh, what does the magnetic flux say? Well, there's, there's one part that's dependent on the magnetic field, one part that's dependent on the area. The last portion is, has to do with the relative orientation of these two things. So if I take, a, take this loop, I don't change the size of it, I don't change uh, how close the magnet is to it, and I spin it. Then the orientation of the loop, which is originally uh, in this direction, if I rotate it, there's going to be uh, less magnetic flux than if I just had it like this, and then when it's uh, like this, I have no magnetic flux. So the three things that you can do to change the magnetic flux are to change the magnetic field strength, change the area that the magnetic flux goes through, and then also change the relative orientation of the magnetic field and uh, the, uh, the area of the loop that you have. Now, the other thing that's uh, really important about um, uh, that's really important about Faraday's law, and as I talked about in the notes, actually really important when it comes to Ampere's law as well, is the connection between dA and dL, right? So dL is a vector, dA is a vector. And so what we've, we've seen in the past, dA is always going to be perpendicular to the surface, and dL is going to follow the, the path that I'm going around. But 
those don't inherently have to be correlated to each other because I could say for DL, I can go uh, in the counterclockwise direction, I can go the clockwise direction. For DA, I could have uh, DA going this way or DA going that way. But what we do when we, when we write Faraday's law and when we use the right-hand rule, we say that there, there is a connection between DL and DA. So if I define DA, so these uh, little boxes of DA, I'm going to say, uh, for, for my choice right now, I'm going to say that it points out. So if this points out, then via the right-hand rule, I can take my right hand, point my thumb in the direction of DA, and then my fingers are forced to curl around in the direction that uh, DL is going to be. So this would be DL. In that case, it would go this way. And the, the opposite is true. So if I have... If I have uh, my little DAs here and they're pointing in, then uh, this says that my DL vector goes in this direction. Okay. Yeah. How do you know where your DAs are? Uh, I, it's a choice. You you choose and you say it, it's kind of like saying, do I want to say up is positive or down is positive, right? If I'm if I'm doing some problem where I I have uh, like a ball and I'm dropping it. Okay, it's, it's a choice to say, I'm going to say that down is positive. I'm going to say up is positive. You, you make a choice and you say DA is either out or it's in, and that fixes what the direction DL has to be. Okay, and the, the way that I did this in the notes and the way that I typically do it is I choose DA to be in the same direction as the magnetic field, and that way when I take the dot product, it's positive. But that, that's a choice, and, and what you find is there's actually a lot of ways that you can get negative signs to come out of this, which is why it's important to, to establish a convention and then follow it. Yeah, you had a question? I had two. So, like, um, going back to, like, choosing a thing, mm -hmm. you were saying that your practice was to pick it based on what you were given for the magnetic field, Yeah. Right? So we could the yeah, exactly, exactly. So uh, the reason why I choose it in the same direction as the magnetic field is so that when I take the dot product, it's positive. But if you choose it, so it, it one, one way that, um, that uh, some people do it is they say, I'm always going to choose it to be pointing out. That's, that's a choice you can make. You can say, I'm always going to choose it to be pointing out. And that correlates with DL because it's always pointing out, it's always going to go down or bottom. Exactly, okay. exactly. And it, but if I do that, what I need to be cognizant of is the fact that depending on what the direction of the magnetic field is, I am going to have a positive or a negative dot product. So if I, if I say that my magnetic field points this way, then the, the dot product is going to be positive. Or if I say it's going this way, the dot product is going to be negative. The, and again, there, there's choice in here. And you have to, you have to choose. You, you follow the convention always. But you have to choose which way you want to say DA and ultimately DL is. And then that's going to inform you in what, what the dot product is going to be. I don't want to jump ahead. But sure. Like if we get a positive or negative sign out of that, does that Tell us yeah. It goes then. So yeah. Exactly. Exactly. It's it's kind of it's kind of the same thing with when we did the the circuit analysis, right? Because you said I have to choose a direction to say the current goes this way, but then when I solve my system of equations, it might turn out that that answer is negative, which just means that it actually is going in the other direction uh, than the, than the, the one that I said it was going in. So we don't really know which way it goes until we get the final <laughs> sign. Of the exactly. Oh, now now the other the other thing and the way that some people do this is they they apply lenses law first and then they say well if you apply lenses law you can take absolute values of everything and then uh, you'll just get the answer that way because you know what the direction of the current is based on um, the, the statement that um, nature is going to act in a way to oppose change um, you could do it like that. I personally prefer not to do it like that because there's a lot of, and, and Lenz's law ultimately is unnecessary. Kind of, kind of in the same way um, uh, Kirchhoff's loop rules, that, that comes from this. Lenz's law also comes from this. So the way that I, I see it, why, why carry around all these extra rules if the one equation tells you all of the things that multiple rules are telling you anyway? Just the, the rules are, are kind of helpful uh, if you want to think about it conceptually, you say. And when, when we do the example, I'll talk about. Um, and, and something that I, I would like you guys to do is to apply Faraday's law and then check your answer with Lenz's law to see, is it consistent with my expectations based on that qualitative? description. Um, but to, to get back to the original point, uh, you just you make a choice for these. You evaluate the dot products according to those rules. And then uh, ultimately, if you have a negative sign, that just means that the opposite direction is the way you define it. Okay. Any, any other questions? Okay. 
so uh, that's that's the way that we, we define the right hand rule for dA and dL. Now, uh, this gets us into uh, Lenz's law and the more qualitative description of this. Uh, so what Lenz's law says, is it's um, it, again, it's a qualitative statement that says nature abhors changes in, in uh, flux and it's going to act in such a way as to oppose those changes. So that means that if, if for instance, I have um, some magnetic field that's increasing in this region, then my loop should contract. So whatever force is acting on this loop will make it shrink because the magnetic field is increasing. Nature's tr trying to oppose that change. Uh, the other way to think about that is if there's an increasing magnetic field here, then the magnetic field that's induced by the current that uh, is created in the loop is going to oppose that change. And so if this is increasing here, then uh, the, the current needs to act so that the magnetic field that it produces goes, goes this way. Okay. Um, again, the, it, it's a good check, but I, I prefer not to, not to rely on the qualitative descriptions when we have a, an analytical description that, that does the same thing and actually is, uh, it, it says more than, than just the, the qualitative description. But I think the qualitative description is very good for um, checking to see if your, your answer is correct. Okay, so that leads us into uh, the example. Um, from the notes, so uh, I have the wrong page open. Okay, so in this example, I tell you that there is some magnetic field that's changing as a function of time. And uh, what you're meant to do is you're meant to find what the current is and what the direction of the current is in some loop of wire, um, given that um, the loop of wire has some radius of A. So this has some radius of A. And it has some resistance of R. And that's, that's kind of the same thing as just saying, I'm going to stick a resistor on this loop and uh, uh, see what the current is that flows through it. Now I tell you that there's some magnetic field B vector is going to be equal to B0 T squared divided by tau squared uh, pointing out. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to determine what the current is that flows through this loop. So the first thing that we can do is write down what Faraday's law says. So uh, the integral of uh, B, or sorry, that's uh, Ampere's law. The integral of E dot dl is equal to the negative partial derivative with respect to time of B dot dA. Okay. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to establish a, a direction. We need to make a choice for uh, what dA is so that ultimately we can evaluate this dot product. And like I said, the way that I, I prefer to do it is to choose dA such that the dot product is, is uh, positive. Now you, you could do this um, 